Okay. All righty. So welcome everyone. I'm Terry Fiore, the president of the New Jersey chapter, and we're kicking off our leadership and committee training with Amber De La Garza. She's a productivity specialist for small business owners. She helps business owners improve their time management and elevate their productivity to maximize profits, reduce stress, and make time for what matters most. And that's all what we, what we all need. Mm -hmm. um, Absolutely. <laughs> so please... <laughs> so please ask questions, please enter them into the Q&A, as Teresa mentioned previously, and Amber will address them at the end of the presentation. And all of this, all of our three presentations will be recorded today and posted on our YouTube channel. So thank you and take it away, Amber. Hello, welcome. I am just going to share my screen so you can see my slide deck. Can I just get a thumbs up, Terry, that you can see my screen and my face? Awesome. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know where I'm looking. Thank you so much for being here today. Today I'm going to share with you smart strategies to be less stressed and more profitable. Okay, so why less stressed and more profitable? Because I absolutely know without a doubt you want both. No matter where you're at in your business, whether you're making incredibly great revenue, thus profitability, that may be coming with a bit of stress. Stress about showing up in your highest value activities and moving the needle and taking your business to the next level, or just quite frankly, feeling like you don't have enough time. As it was mentioned um, in the intro, I am a coach, trainer, speaker, uh, and podcast coach, um, host, podcast host, and I specialize in productivity and time management for small business owners. I started this journey because I was actually a business coach where I coached uh, the top sales executives in the real estate industry how to leverage themselves through growing their teams. There was just one issue with that. While they had the resources at their fingertips, they had great coaching, great training. I heard the same thing over and over. This is amazing, but I'm so overwhelmed and I'm so out of time. I'm so busy working in my business, I have no time to work on my business. Can anyone here relate to that? Well, if you can, then you're in the right place because that little seed, hearing those words from my clients, looking at my clients who were successful but wanted to get to the next level, hearing them say that, I went on a journey to find out, can time management and productivity be a skill set that can be learned? And when it's learned and you utilize this skill set in your business in day to day, what can you unlock? Can you take your business to the next level? Because now you can execute on all the amazing creative ideas that you have. Now you can execute on the support that you are getting that is around you, but it seems like there's never enough time to execute. So I want to start off by sharing one of my favorite quotes, and it says, Time is our most valuable asset, yet we tend to waste it, kill it, and spend it rather than invest it. And I want to ask you, are you investing your time? Are you investing your time on activities that will propel you towards achieving your goals? Now, productivity is a word that is thrown around and there are a hundred different definitions. In fact, there's probably as many definitions of what productivity is and is not based on who is attending here today. So for this training, I want to share with you my definition of productivity. And if you like it, you can keep it. <laughs> productivity is simply this. You are being productive when you are investing your best time into your best activities. Now this is amazing because it's a framework. When you find blocks of focused, energized, distraction-free time. And I can't see your hands, but if you want to raise your hands in the, in the uh, chat below and say, yes, I want some more of that. Like I want more focused, energized, distraction-free time so that you can invest it in the activities that will propel you towards achieving your goals. You see, in this definition, what you did not hear is that productivity is being super organized, having a absolutely clean desk, color-coded file folders. I don't believe that is true. 
you also didn't hear me talk about uh, efficiency, right? Now, why is productivity not the same as organization? Well, do you know someone that you cannot see them behind their desk, that they have the messiest office, nothing is organized, and yet they're slaying their goals? Absolutely. And the opposite, do you know someone that has a color-coded calendar, completely clean desk, and still is not achieving their goals? And I think you may know someone like that. So if both of those are true, then what that means is productivity has nothing to do with organization. Productivity is when you are accomplishing your goals. All right, so this framework is amazing because it can lay over any goals you have. This can lay over your business goals, your personal goals, and even relationship goals. Now, we're gonna talk more about business goals and how being productive is going to help you achieve your goals in business. But let me give you an example of a personal one. So for me, if I am investing my best time into my best activities, and my goal is to have a certain relationship with my son. His love language is quality time. So I am being my most productive self at 8.30 every single night when I'm cuddled up in my son's bed, reading a book and doing trivia and hearing about his day. And if I wasn't being productive, tell me, do you know that I could be cleaning the kitchen and doing dishes or going to bed earlier, there are so many other things that I could be spending my time on. But because I identified the key activity that I believe will propel me toward my goal of my relationship with my son, I show up and I show up consistently. And I show up present and distraction free. And that is my best activity to reach that goal. Now, this can also work with your uh, personal fitness goals or your weight loss goals. But let's dive deeper into how you being your most productive self would show up in business. So you hear me say identify your best activities, but it's not as easy as that framework may lead it to be. And so I wanna take some time to break down my framework for identifying your best activities as a business owner. And this is really important because as a business owner, being responsible for the income that comes into your business, you have the ability to spend your time and energy on so many things. Well, let's identify what those high value activities are. I break them down into four buckets. As a business owner, you will find your highest value activities in marketing and visibility activities. You see, we could be spending all of our time in servicing our clients and creating wonderful and amazing designs and going on presentations, but if we don't show up consistently letting the world know what we do and how we can help them, our business will not be profitable. So when you show up consistently, most productive in your marketing and visibility bucket and it's overflowing, then your other activity as a business owner will be sales, sales activities. So this will be going to consultations and doing presentations, closing the deal, asking for the business. Because only when you show up in these first two buckets do you actually get to service your clients. Now, servicing your clients is a high value activity but it's the one that sneaks up on you and can actually sabotage you showing up in all of your activities. Here's why. You are incredibly talented. You are incredibly skilled. You probably absolutely enjoy serving your clients and creating the design for your clients. So this bucket is an easy bucket to be in. But if you are not very, very purposeful, and showing up consistently in all the buckets and not just having your head down saying, I'm servicing my clients, I'm servicing my clients, and then you look up and wonder, where is the business gonna come next? And then I want to encourage you that you need to, or you will want to, um, actually purposely create time 
so that you're showing up consistently in these first three buckets. Now, depending on where your business is at, this is going to be different for all of us. Your role will be absolutely different in servicing your clients if you are a solo designer versus running a firm, right? But you have to be really clear as your role in the company, how do you serve these three areas? And as your business grows, you will be spending more and more, investing more and more time in the leadership bucket. I want you to hear that after almost a decade of coaching small business owners, specifically around time management and productivity, I have heard time and time again that People are reluctant to show up in training and hiring and recruiting and investing in the talent that will allow them to take them to their business to the next level. As a business owner though, your leadership is a huge investment because every time you invest in others, they are able to invest in the marketing visibility, sales and servicing your clients bucket. Now, this may seem like I get it, Amber. I've heard this. I know I've been in business for a while. Like I get that marketing sales and servicing my clients are important. Knowing that and doing it are completely different. And for those of you that are designers that are not a business owner right now, and maybe you work for another firm, you are still serving the clients and most likely responsible for bringing in business. So while yours may be nuanced from the actual activities, I will encourage each of you to take the time to really say, what are the activities that move the needle forward to, towards my vision of success? Now, I just said, knowing these things, this may have been the biggest reminder and you're thinking, what's coming next in this training? It's different than doing it because my guess is that many, many of you are here because you spend a majority of time in the other bucket. You see, that other bucket has got no money in it. And it is the other bucket that sabotages. It pulls our attention. We think we're just gonna be there for a minute and we start our day trying to put out fires, right? And then we end our day and we say, how did I have no time to design today? Like, I know that that was the most important thing, and yet I just put the kids to sleep and I'm designing through the middle of the night. Is that you? Like, I hear it. I hear it from my design clients. I know that this is a reality for so many of you. And so everything I'm going to share with you moving forward in this training today is how to maximize your time. Because if you're coming to this training saying, I don't have time to show up consistently in these buckets. I never feel like I have enough time to really sit down and be creative with my design. In fact, I've kind of coined a phrase that I've heard over and over with my clients and that it design that once was inspired and came from passion and pure enjoyment is now a transactional experience of something that gets checked off on a box. And I don't want that for you. I know that you got into this industry because you truly, truly want to and do enjoy what you're doing. So if you've mumbled to yourself, there's never enough time, I don't have enough time, when will there be enough time, any variation of that, I'm going to invite you to think of your time as a limited, sacred resource that you cannot make more of, you cannot multiply, you cannot get back. So how will you invest it? How will you maximize your investment of time? Well, I'm going to share with you 12 ways to ensure you are maximizing your time. And my guess is that some of these you've got nailed down and others you're like, this is an area for improvement. So I'm going to rapid fire, go through these and share them with you and give you some strategies and examples about how when you maximize your time using these 12 simple methods, you can reclaim time. Reclaim time. Claim it back. You're not wasting it anymore. So that you can take it and invest it in growing your business or tucking your kids in at night or having dinner with the family or enjoying a hobby. What you do with your time 
is completely up to you. But what I know is that it's a valuable resource that I want to put you in the driver's seat of, of where you're purposely and proactively investing it. So let's not waste it. 12 time maximizers. Let's take these one by one. Number one is eliminate activities. You see, chances are you're what I call redlining, overheating, maxed out. There is not another thing I could add to your plate or you could add to your own plate. And if that's the way that you feel, excuse me. <coughs> Sorry, if that's the way that you feel, you have to start by eliminating. You have to stop by, start by not doing activities that you think you're the only one that needs to do. Or maybe, in fact, before I got into small business productivity, I started as a corporate consultant around efficiency. And I would meet with, I would come into these companies, these corporations, and I would meet with the team and I would meet with the employees and I would go through like a workflow audit. And I would ask, what do you do? What is your role? What does your day-to-day -day look like? And when I would ask very specific questions, sometimes I would get answers up because we've always done it that way. I don't know why I do that. I just do it. It just became automatic. I've been here for five years. Maybe that's how you're running your day-to-day -day in your business. So take a look and see what activities you can eliminate today. Number two, create a task list. Look, I am not going to assume that you are working from a task list. And the reason I'm not going to assume is because so many of my clients come to me and are not working from a consistent task list. Now, why? Is it a time maximizer? Because you do not have the ability, and I'm gonna say this as nicely as possible, to keep everything in your head. You don't. So if you needed a reminder or somebody else to tell you, you're not different. Things are gonna fall through the cracks. Things are not gonna get done. And really it's so much more difficult to prioritize what you're focusing your time, energy, and attention on when you don't have a task list. So look, it can be a digital task list. I love digital task lists, I love ClickUp. But if that's not you, or tech is a struggle right now, do not overthink it. Simplicity is always key because the, the point that I want you to hear is this the principle of having a task list. Then you can do all the bells and whistles. So if your task list currently consists of random pieces of paper, backs of pieces of paper, sticky notes in your head, maybe notes on your phone, my first request of you will be to commit to consolidating it in one place. And maybe it's just a steno pad. Maybe it's just one legal pad of paper. Don't overthink it. Commit to working from a task list that you look at consistently and update. Because when you work from a task list, you can do what's next, which is number three, which is plan your day. If you currently feel like you are running from fire to fire, that you are kind of in the passenger seat of your own day, you're not in the driver's seat, that you're reactively just showing up and seeing what shows up in your inbox and what phone calls come in and you're just gonna figure it out, I'm gonna say the easiest way to move from being reactive to proactive is to plan your day. Now, many of you have tried to plan your day before. I know. And you say, but it never goes as planned, or it didn't go as planned, or I don't really know how long things take, so it just seems like a waste of time to plan the day. I am here to tell you that when you plan your day, it is more likely to go the way you planned it than just haphazardly approaching the day. And the truth is, no day ever goes as planned. Never. I have never had a day go exactly as planned. But 
if I'm planning my day and I start my day here and I'm at A, and my goal is to finish the day at B, and along the way I'm gonna have some stops. If I plan my day and set intentions, when, not if, when something happens that grabs our attention, or there's a fire that needs to be put out, or a kid, call, your kid's sick for the day, you are going to handle those situations. But this is what it's gonna look like. If this is the railroad tracks that you set, you're gonna come over here, handle it, and you're gonna know where to come back to. And you may not get as far down the path, but you're gonna keep going. And something else is gonna happen, and it's gonna grab your attention, and you know where to come back to. And I know that you want that because how many times has something happened that totally threw off your day? You get back to the office or the desk, you have the time, and you're like, I don't even know where to start. And then you're scrolling social media or you're jumping in your inbox. And you look back and you're like, I wish I could have really maximized that time, but I felt like I didn't know what was next. So you just, defaulted to busy. Planning your day will allow you to set that intention, get back on track, put yourself in the driver's seat. And on my podcast, I have an episode called the five daily planning pavers. I break down my five step framework to plan your day in 15 minutes or less. So if you want my step by step process, feel free to go grab that for free on the podcast productivity straight talk. Number four, implement time blocking. Okay, this is a goodie. There's two types of time blocking and I'm gonna summarize both for you. My guess is that you're familiar with the terminology or the phrase of time blocking. And generally when we say that, we're talking about our Mondays look like this and our mornings look like that and every Friday looks like this. Well, there is absolutely a reason to use that. But there is a second way to time block that I think is a great way to kind of entry level yourself into time blocking and is incredibly beneficial for the person that no day looks the same, that there has to be a lot of fluidity and adjustment and adaptability. And that's going to be to time block specific tasks that need your attention on to your calendar, also known as setting an appointment with yourself. Isn't it crazy when you have an appointment with someone else, you show up? Like, you show up. And if you can't show up, you reschedule. Except for when we tell ourselves we're gonna do something and something else catches our attention or in the moment seems more important, we don't hold that time or that attention and focus as sacred as if we had an appointment with someone else. So a simple way to just get started with time blocking is identify your top two to three high value activities or tasks that you know you absolutely want to get done for the day and make an appointment with yourself at 10 o'clock for 60 minutes or at three o'clock for 30 minutes and put that task right there on your calendar. And because you're doing it from tonight for tomorrow, you have so much flexibility with it. But the small change of making an appointment with yourself, setting the intention, and knowing that you're gonna show up and just focus on getting that task done, you will maximize your time because you're not allowing yourself to get distracted by everything else that is calling for your attention. Number six, stop, stop multitasking. No, 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 come back to me. I bet many of you are multitasking right now. Stop multitasking. Now, if you would have known me 15 years ago, I would have proudly had on my resume that I could absolutely multitask. I was a multitasking master because I didn't know any better and I thought it was a good thing. It's not. We, in fact, are not multitasking. That is actually a lie. What we're doing is switch tasking. And we don't have the ability to fully focus our mind on two things at the same exact time. So when you're writing an email and, a, and 
um, an employee walks in the room and is talking to you, you're going to talk to them and address them. And when you come back, if you tried to keep typing, guaranteed there's mistakes. If you didn't keep try, trying to type, you're going to come back. You're going to have to reread. You're going to have to get yourself in the zone again. You're going to have to focus. You're going to have to feel your flow to finish the email. Incredibly inefficient with your time. So when you have the choice, I want you to catch yourself multitasking. Now we're going to talk about distractions and interruptions, and those are a bit different. But when you are making the choice to multitask, I'm going to ask you that you make yourself aware of it and choose differently. In fact, multitasking is not something you can just say, now I know, and now I'm never going to multitask again. It's almost like we're hardwired as humans that when we feel stressed, we, we default to multitasking because we think, we rationalize that it's the way in which we're going to get more done. Well, here's what's really happening. You're just not having the hard conversation with yourself about what is actually going to get your attention and time. You're not going to say, I'm going to do this and then this. And so we try to do both. And if you need a reminder of when you are multitasking, here's some clues. For me, I start sweating. I start holding my breath a little bit. I feel more tense. And when I start feeling that way, I'll look around and realize I have a lot going on. I have two monitors, I might have multiple tabs open, I'll have something on my desk. And what happened was, is I just was on autopilot and kind of defaulted back to multitasking. And in that moment, when I realize it, I choose to stop and choose what will get my attention. So that's my invitation for you today, is to practice choosing to not multitask more often so that you can reclaim time. <sighs> this is a good one. All right, next, take breaks. I feel like if I gave you a bunch of these strategies to maximize time, you might get the wrong idea that I'm all about work, work, work. I am not. I'm actually all about less stress. And I'm about who you are as a person. And I believe that we can show up our best, most creatively, most focused, more patient when we take breaks. And I mean breaks during the day, like get up, move your body, get your energy going. In fact, that's what I was doing right now before I started teaching to you today. I'm standing up, I'm moving my body. It's about creating the energy. I'm fueling my body, I've got water. I'm taking a brain break because there's always a point of no return on investment of time when you push through exhaustion and you're making more mistakes or you're doing it so slowly because your brain can't think it's got brain fog that you think you're doing it you're you're working hard because you're a hard worker but really if you took a break and came back you would have had time for the break and the activity and invested in yourself so just behind the scenes. It's going to come out on a podcast soon. I've been experimenting with 25 minute power naps for the last two weeks. I literally feel like I am a different person. I am a better mom at night. I'm a better wife. I have more patience. I am so much more focused in the afternoon when I have meetings with my clients or my team. And so I just started with an experiment to say, I used to not need naps. Maybe I need naps now. <laughs> And so far, the experiment proves I'm doing much better with my 25-minute naps. So what do you need? What break do you need to have the end result of you just showing up, doing your best work? Next, say no. No, I mean it. Man, if you want to maximize your time, you have got to say no. You're gonna say no in your own voice. Um, my husband's version of saying no is no. And that's it. That's not my version. That doesn't feel good to me. You need to find your voice, but you have to say no. You have to say more, no more often so you can say yes to other things. 
You have to say no so you don't feel like you're redlining and you're not giving the service and, and serving your clients that you have at the level you want because you're saying yes to everything. I'm gonna give you three little ways you can say no and I'm gonna tell you about a way that you can get the free training all about how to say no um, at the end of this. But you're gonna say no to things you've already said yes to. And that can be a little difficult. It may look like you're backing out of something. But if you don't evaluate something you said yes to that no longer serves you, or maybe it's not turning out the way you thought, or it's not propelling you towards your goals, I encourage you to audit that, find those things, and have the courage to say no. The second way that you can say no is to new opportunities. I call them uh, distractions dressed up as opportunities. <laughs> They never come in saying I'm a distraction. They always come in saying, I've got this great opportunity. And you, or you think it's a great opportunity. So your default is yes. I'm gonna teach you in that mini training how to filter those requests of your time and to see, do they propel you towards your goals? And the third way I'm gonna invite you to say no is to yourself. Say no to negative self-talk. Say no to negotiating with yourself. Remember time blocking and making an appointment with yourself? That's the strategy. You're going to make an appointment with yourself, but you're also gonna have an opportunity to talk yourself out of showing up. And when that opportunity happens, I want you to tell yourself no. Sometimes we have to put the hard talk, no nonsense, straight talk to ourselves so that we show up and we do our best. So say no more often to maximize your time. Next, so let's see, eight is start delegating. I can't say this enough. You know, we generally think we can do all the things and maybe better and faster or we think it's gonna take too long to ask someone else to help. When you're building your team, when you're asking for help, it's an investment in multiplying your time. I don't believe that the big dreams that we hold for our businesses or how we're gonna serve our clients or what it is we want to accomplish can happen by ourselves. And so I'm gonna encourage you to find ways to start delegating more. Maybe you delegate now, but you're kind of on autopilot. What else can you delegate? Ask yourself, what else is not in my high value activities? What is showing up on my day that is in the other bucket that I can delegate off so that I can double down on serving my clients. I can double down on marketing and visibility and letting the world know how I can help them. It's very hard to do it all. In fact, it's impossible to do it all. So if you know that to be true, what can you delegate today? Like right now, like if you have a pen and piece of paper, write down just two things that you are committing to delegating. Number nine, process your emails. Yes, your emails are not your to-do list. In fact, I have never had anyone email me and say, how can I help you achieve your goals? No, it's more like, how can you help me? I need something from you. I need your time, energy, attention, right? That's what every single email is. So if you start your day, live in your day, um, decide where your time is going to go based on what's in your inbox, you will find a slow, slow path to achieving your goals. It will come with stress and overwhelm. And I'm not saying not to definitely address everything in your inbox, but there's a smart way to do so. And that's going to be on purpose, on your terms, for a focused amount of time, maybe multiple times a day, but that you're gonna process them. You're no longer cherry picking them, okay? So if email is the bean of your existence and you have an inbox, thousands, tens of thousands, I mean, I've had clients that have had 70,000 emails in their inbox, then you need a simple way 
to learn to process your emails. And I definitely do have a masterclass. It's really um, gives you my five step framework to learn how to process your emails. But at the very least for today, what I want you to do is say, for those blocks of time that I'm creating, that I'm designing, that I'm showing up in my high value activity, get out of your inbox. Create a no email zone for those times that you're focusing so that you can show up and maximize your time. Okay, uh, 10, organize your space. Okay, you're like, but you started off telling me that organization is not the same as productivity. So what is this about? I get it. Here's what this is about. If you are telling me that you do not have enough time to serve your clients, to hit those deadlines, to uh, market, to bring on new clients, like you're literally saying there's just not enough time, and you're looking for missing things, lost things, keys you can't get out of the house, documents that you're recreating because you saved them in the wrong folder. If you sit down at your workspace and you cannot create that focus, energy, and time to do the design because your office space is distracting, then organization is the best way to maximize your time. Now, if those aren't your issues, then don't organize your space. But if you're missing things, losing things, recreating things, or can't find focus, then organizing your space, digitally and physical space, will absolutely support you being your most productive self. Now, I truly believe that we are all unique. For me, my desk is white, my furniture is white, the desktop is white, paper is distracting to me. But there are some of you that if I came and cleared off your entire desk and said design, you'd think I put you in a straitjacket. So don't do that because you think that that's the way forward. We want you to ask yourself, what do you need to show up your best? All right, managing interruptions. Now, we cannot manage other people. Like, I've tried, my husband, my dogs, my son, like, it doesn't work. You cannot control other people. But what you can control is how you make yourself available to others. And so, for example, yesterday, I have a client that I've worked with for some time, and he's working on this new, highly creative project that's taking more bandwidth than he is, was prepared for. He said, this is taking so much creative juice. Usually, I can jump in and out of design quite quickly between the other things I need to do during the day. But this design, has it's taking up so much brain power that I can't seem to find my focus as quickly as other types of work I've done in the past. And I said, okay, what, what are you doing when you are going to design? Like, talk to me about your environment. Talk to me about what's going on. And they literally went through some basics. And while generally he's able to have the door open to his team and his employees, uh, when he designs, he can work well with that white noise because this was taking a different kind of level of focus. We went back to the basics. I said, shut your door. Put a sign on the door that says, do not disturb. And it's not all day, he's the CEO. It's not every day, it's for the time that he felt that he needed to find his most focused, distraction-free time to do his best work. So what does that look like about putting boundaries up and how you make yourself accessible to others through interruption? And last but not least is minimize distractions. Shut off your chimes, rings, and dings. Those notifications were created for one purpose only, and that was to break your focus and get your attention. That's it, like that's what they were created for. And by default, we just kind of keep them on. We keep them on our phone, we keep them on our computer every time an email comes in. We just, every app has them. Do not fall prey to every chime ring and ding getting your attention when your time is so valuable. When your focus, your flow state, you showing up in your best activities is 
is so valuable to the success of your business, do not give it away to distractions, okay? All right, so just do an audit. And again, I'm not talking about turning off your text messages all day, like of course we need to be accessible. But can you turn off all those other random apps that are getting your attention? Can you put your phone on airplane mode or no notification mode as my phone is on right now for small blocks of time that you really want to do your best work? All right, so in a summary today, I did a power session with my top 12 tips to maximize your time because there are so many of you on this training here today. And I wanted to make sure that each of you walked away with one, two, maybe three things that you thought, I'm gonna grab that, I'm gonna focus on it, and I'm gonna take action. And maybe you're like, Amber, I need help in all 12. I get it, do not fall temptation or get tempted to get overwhelmed. Just pick one or two areas that you're willing to commit to making improvement. And then come back and look at your notes and select another one that you will work on. Because the goal here is slow and steady, consistent change. When we try to change all the things at one time, like a, um, I don't know, January 1st, when you're like, I'm not eating this and I'm going to exercise this many times a day. And then February 15th comes and you're like, that seems like that was forever ago when I made that uh, resolution. I don't want that. I don't want yo-yo time management. I want consistent improvement and you build on those wins and you take those momentums and you make improvement on the next one and the next one. So uh, let's see, let's close this out by reminding you that my goal is to help you be your most productive self. I want you to invest your best time into your best activities so that you can reduce your stress and overwhelm and maximize profits because you're focusing your time and energy on the activities that will move the needle forward. All right. So I think we're going to open it up with questions. I have a couple next steps for you if you choose to take them with me. Um, I have a podcast, like I said, so if you are a podcast listener and just want some more trainings, if you enjoyed today's um, training, and if you want some more of that, uh, the podcast is called Productivity Straight Talk. And as I mentioned in the training, I have a free mini training for you called Take Back Your Time. And that training is 20 minutes, and I'm going to show you how to simply reclaim 30 minutes each and every day. And I'm going to do that by teaching you how to say no. There's some other great stuff in there too, but the one that I talked about in this training was breaking down the three ways in more detail about how to say no. And you can grab that training by going to amberdaylagarza.com forward slash take back your time. Thank you so much for having me here today. And we are going to open this up for some questions. And I'm really excited to answer your questions. Uh, that was awesome, Amber. Thank you so much. Um, okay, so my two that I picked was to implement time blocking. And I noticed that you, and to process my emails. So both of which I'm sure I know a lot of us have, have that issue for emails. So as far as emails go, is there any, like, is there anything that we can do just to start, I mean, putting it certain emails into junk they always seem to come back like how do we how do we start with email processing yeah absolutely so the very first step to email processing is deciding when you're going to be in your inbox and so for you it for whomever is listening maybe that's three times a day or four times a day four times of 30 minutes a day is better than just having your inbox open all day long the second step is to no longer cherry pick what gets returned, what gets responded to. Because when we're looking at maximizing our time, you read an email and then come back and you reread it and then you leave it minimized and then you think about answering it and then it's still chattering to you and then you finally answer the email. That is a lot of wasted time. So what I teach is um, a five step, five simple email decisions because what we're doing is delaying the decision about how to handle that email. 
And that's truly what processing our emails are, is being really quick at making a decision. What happens? Is it filed? Is it deleted? Am I responding to it? Or does it get on my to-do list? Because when we just keep it in our inbox, it's not being prioritized with the other things on our to-do list, right? Uh, so you want to create, get it out of your to-do box and create um, an action item so that you can give that email that needs 20 minutes to prepare the proper time and space on your schedule. Okay, that's great. Okay, we have a question. Um, do you have a suggestion for a digital task list that could keep, that could use or keep on my computer? Yes, absolutely. So the digital task list program I use is a task list and project management system, and it's called ClickUp. Um, I actually just did a podcast episode about ClickUp, or you can find more about ClickUp with a discount um, at amberdelagarza.com forward slash ClickUp. Um, it is really, you can make it so simple, or you can have it be incredibly robust. So for those of you that do not have a project management program or don't see your projects in Gantt view and know what your resources are and when you're starting a project and what milestones, ClickUp can do everything from simple to-do lists all the way up to project managing your entire projects. Okay, great. Um, as, and then as far as time blocking, um, could you get, go into depth a little bit on that, on the best way to time block? Yeah, absolutely. So what are some quick tips about time blocking? Um, so actually, one of, some of my favorite things to share are uh, the ways in which people think they're doing it right, but actually sabotage the whole time blocking. So let's go with that. The only way that time blocking works, just a second, I have an example. Okay, all right. So do you guys remember this little game you guys would get like when your kids would go to like a little party and you have to put the numbers in the right order, right? Okay, the only reason this works is because of this space right here. Now, humor me, it's black, but I'm gonna call it white space. Our schedules are exactly the same. We think that with a block schedule, we should have a purpose and a place to be and an appointment and a task to do every minute of the day. But as soon as something doesn't go as planned, like a meeting runs over or somebody's late or something new comes up that needs our attention, it's a train wreck. And so my best advice about time blocking is to make sure that you create that buffer space, that white space, so that you can ebb and flow and move and still honor the few things that you put on your calendar. Time blocking for me is not necessarily about having something in every spot, but rather choosing the things that are non-negotiable and those go on your calendar. Start there. Because when you can do that and hold those sacred, when you start adding more and more, you're gonna be training yourself to follow the schedule. So a couple ways that people really miss up with time blocking is not creating enough white space and also, um, trying to schedule everything right out of the gate. Like they're super excited to time block and they think everything needs to show up on their calendar. Okay, great. Okay, are there any other questions? Anything guys? Now's your chance. Loved, I loved your <laughs> um, say no and that's something that I've been working on. So I'm definitely going to take you up on your other training on that. Oh, thank you, Virginia. You know, I think that saying no um, can come off as like a negative. Mm -hmm. There are so many gracious ways to say it. There's so many ways that you can express. Um, and in the training, you'll hear me teach you how to negotiate. So for example, you may work from at home and your neighbors know that and they're like, oh, can you go pick up my kids, mm -hmm. right? And, and you want to help them, but they need you to pick them up right when you have something else you need to do. So if we're timid to say no, we'll just say yes, and we'll pick up the pieces of what that does to our schedule. So in that example, you could say something like, I can't pick them up today, but I'll be happy to pick them up Friday if that could help you out. Like maybe they're just having like some issues with the other person they pick up. So there's tools in negotiating to make sure that you can still serve and help and show up, 
but you have to be clear about what it is you can offer. Um, and so again, no is not always N-O. It could be a variation to ensure that you are honoring your time as well. I love that. Thank you. You're welcome. That's good. I like number eight about start delegating. Um, and I think a lot of people hold back from delegating because you feel like you could just do it quicker yourself. Yes. So, yes. So, uh, you know, delegation is, so when we think of delegating, I want you to think of what can you delegate that happens most like frequently? Okay, don't start off with the one off odd random emails or random scenarios. Mm -hmm. If you look at where you're investing your time and you spent, um, you know, four hours a week on an activity and it took you an hour and a half to like painstakingly slow down and explain it. And it feels like a long time in that hour and a half. You're making your time back in two days. Like, even if it took you five hours to teach somebody how to do something that you're spending four hours on in just a little over a week, every time they help you do it, you're reclaiming time. So look at the time return and you'll get more return on your time if you start off with those things that are happening repetitively. So start there. And we have a comment also. Good tips and reminders. Just a personal note this past year, I began car carving out time for exercise. It has resulted in better productivity overall. From one yes. Of our yes. I hope everybody heard that. I look, um, so usually when I speak to a live audience, um, the last five years, I have asked this almost the same question. And it's something like this. If I could wave a magic wand and give you back five hours a week, what would you do with it? Mm -hmm. And at first I thought, surely it's going to be like fun or grow my business. And then I heard sleep. Mm -hmm. And then I heard sleep again. And then every single time I would ask, they, I would hear sleep. And I thought, this is crazy. But it's the reality. And sleep, like exercise, is generally one of the only things we solely do for ourselves. So when time is crunched and our kids need something, our spouses need something, and our clients need something, the whole world needs something, we, keep, we, we start to dwindle down sleep and exercise. Mm -hmm. And yet, those two things, when we prioritize, let us show up our best to be a spouse and a parent and a business owner and a friend. So definitely um, look at that long-term investment of you're actually doing it, not just for yourself, but for others when you prioritize sleep and exercise. That's great. Okay. So I awesome. think we're going to wrap this up. That was awesome. Thank you so much, Amber. Great. Um, Thank you so much. If I can just end the way that I end all my podcasts. So no change, no change. Without taking action, nothing will change for you or your business. So don't get overwhelmed. Choose one small thing because let me, let me tell you, you just invested 50 minutes here today with me. And my biggest hope is that you take one thing that you learned today that was an aha and not just as a reminder, but like, I'm going to go take action and see the results. That's the biggest gift you can give to yourself as well. Thank you so much for being here. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you, Amber. Thanks everyone for watching and Bye -bye. we will see you. Um, we're going to put a screensaver on and we'll see you in about five minutes as we take our little break. I'm Terry Fiore, president of the New Jersey chapter. The second hour is where we're going to re be reviewing our chapter strategic plan and our projected outline for the year. Um, so our attention for this is to be an overview, which means that each director will be reaching out to their committee members and volunteers in the very near future at a time that's convenient for all. So not to jam you, you know, or take up your entire afternoon. Um, so thank you for everyone who reached out to volunteer in any capacity. Um, thank you. And after seeing this presentation, you'll have a better idea of what might appeal to you and where help is absolutely needed. So thank you, thank you. If you have any questions, then answer them in the Q&A and we'll address them at the end. Um, and the three hour session is being recorded and it's gonna be posted on YouTube. So um, Virginia, Diane and Charles will be a part of the presentation as well. And we're gonna be conducting a few um, very grassroots type of uh, surveys throughout as well. 
So as we learn to use our Zoom, we'll become a little bit more technical. But for now, we're just gonna ask people to raise their hands during the presentation. So with that said, I'm going to share my screen. And here's my PowerPoint. And then, there we go. Okay, let me get back to the beginning. Sorry, everyone, that's kind of obnoxious. Okay, so hello, welcome to Committee hello. Leadership and Training Overview. Oh, oh let me, I'm gonna use my button here. Okay, so on the agenda today, um, we're gonna be reviewing our ASID mission statement, the old and the new. Um, I'll be reviewing the leadership structure at the chapter level. Uh, you'll be meeting our board of directors and learning about what's new for this year, our programs and events. And a little bit about, we'll be touching a little bit on sponsorship. And then at the end, um, you'll find out, or before the end, you'll find out who your director is or who you, um, who you can reach out to if you're interested in volunteering. And then everyone will separately work with their team. So take it away, Diane. Hi, everybody. It's an honor to be here to serve you, for sure. Um, and I'm, it's great to see so many of you in our uh, meeting today. It's a great opportunity, actually. So here we have um, what was our mission. The, the mission advances the interior design profession and communicates the impact of design. You've heard those words before. Um, they're very wonderful, good words, and um, we're going to go to the, the new goals on the next screen here. Um, these words, notice what stands out to you when you read these. To me, it was empower members and to give a positive impact. And how? Um, to give that positive impact through collaboration and using our brains as designers, design thinking, and of course, something that I've done in the past is advocacy, which was very special to me. So in, in doing this, how can you all help us out? Because we're, we're very interested in your collaboration and the energy that you'll provide. And why does the organization do what it does? Um, we want the designers to expand the understanding out there that designers can be very helpful with um, the problems that COVID has presented us with. Not only that, we're all dealing with the great technology changes that are, if not already here, are really up the road coming in very quickly. So we want to partner with our members um, to expand the understanding of what interior designers do in the community to help people learn uh, how to live and how to work better uh, considering the design principles and the new solutions that are out there that we all um, find, you know, um, innovative and can work with. As an example, let's see, during COVID this um, spring, I worked with a, a healthcare in, uh, educator and researcher, and we partnered in doing um, issues on wellness and resiliency. Um, and it was something that I never would have guessed I'd be doing, and there I was doing it. So you have to be giving yourself the courage to say yes to things that maybe you're not so familiar with, but with collaboration, maybe we'll come and be very helpful to you, you know? So, um, so you have to say yes to some things and, and the energy and the collaborative spirit that involves just lifts you up and transforms everybody around you. Um, also this year, the chapter's doing a wonderful member mentorship program and we're planning um, a Q practice session for NCIDQ and, and other than that, a mentorship program. So we'll be mentoring um, emerging professionals, but also those later in their careers who want to get a new perspective on their practice. So we're really happy and, and hopeful that a lot of you out there will join us and, and Terry will give you an opportunity later, uh, you know, to volunteer and just, even if you just a portion of your time would be so helpful. So thanks, Tara. Okay, thank you, Diane. Okay, so I'd just like to introduce everyone to the board. I'm, as I said, I'm the president, um, Virginia, 
president-elect, Vendor Liberato. Linda Kitson is our communications director. Charles Sachs is our membership director. Susan Barbieri is our director at large. I don't see her on the screen right now. Um, finance director is Chris Farah. Our student rep to the board is Sh Shannon Landestoy. Our professional development director is Nada Elzubi. And our parliamentarian, as you know, is Diane Gote. So thank you, everyone. Okay, and Virginia is going to review the organizational structure, structure at the chapter level. Hi, everybody. For those of you that are not familiar, the president is a one year term chapter leader, non voting. President elect is a one year also. Board of directors are two years. And just to give you an overview of kind of the areas of responsibility communication director, blueprint, public relations, and marketing. Financial director is basically just that in charge of keeping us in line on our finances. Professional development director, programs and continuing education. Membership director, membership emerging professionals, IP steering and student affairs. Director at large, DEA, community service, NCIDQ prep, legislative and chapter awards. So just to, th these are some of the key things, not of course all of them. Student representative to the board is a one year term and parliamentarian is optional, but I believe that's a one year term as well. Mm -hmm. Yep. Okay, great, thank you very much. Okay, so two words that, um, that we'd like to focus on this year, um, this challenging year is community and collaboration. Here. Okay, so the question is how we collaborate and how we can communicate in, in this day and age. So one way that we collaborate is by surveys, um, where we are taking quarterly surveys. Um, we're reaching out on, we reached out on Facebook and that was very successful, um, but we'll also be focusing on Instagram and our private Facebook group. As you can see on the screen, if you could please join the, um, the ASIDNJ Designer Industry Partner and Student page. We're trying to really amplify the message on Facebook. And then if you could follow us right now, even would be great on ASIDNJ, we're focusing on just really focusing on um, Design Impacts Lives, focusing on the DEA award winners um, and everything that our strategic plan is, um, is guiding us, um, how it's guiding us. So that will all be a reflection of our Instagram and on our Facebook as well. And then please call us if you, our phone numbers are listed on our website. If you have any questions, any input, please, this is all, we love to collaborate and just, we need your feedback. Um, Blueprint will be printed twice digitally, right, Linda? And in print um, this year as well. So we'll be having a spring issue and a, and a fall, fall and then a spring issue. <clears throat> And then through our online programs, like we're having uh, roundtable discussions and book club meetings, which I'll get into a little bit further when we start reviewing the strategic plan for the year. Okay. So this one's for you, Virginia. Yes. So your this, is, this is my slide. Um, mm -hmm. And we did a survey in June um, for why, wanted to see why did you join ASID? We wanted to get a pulse on what was happening Interestingly enough, 32% network and share with others. Um, I need my glasses, let's see. 18% professional development and continuing education and 15% promote professionalism and have a voice in our industry. So these were the top three that came back from our survey. And then let me just move the box. The results from the survey, basically we wanted to see who our members are and you see the pie chart, whether you're an industry partner, a student, a commercial, residential, whatever your um, area of expertise is. So that is what the 
pie chart is. And then we did ask everyone to check their top three topics that were of interest to them. And top of the chart was business methods and tools, technology, lighting design, and fourth was sustainability. Other interests were wellness, aging in place, multi-generational living, kitchen and bath design, product and furniture design, aviation design, fun, and fabrics and wallpaper. Okay, so like, go ahead, Virginia. Yeah, are we going into the next screen? So yeah. Oops, we're going, yeah, we're I'm going. moving it on mic. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Terry and I did a little, you know, test run, but here we go. So for those of you that are live, you can raise your hand. And if not, if you go to the bottom of the screen, if you go to um, the participants, you can raise your hand there is what we learned this morning. So we'd love to do a little quick online survey right now too of what your top, um, well, this is what type of membership do you hold? So how many students do we have with us today? Yeah, I can't see any of the hands because I'm square sharing the screen. Okay, so, so maybe uh, I can. Um, yeah, so we'd love to get an informal. Okay, hold on. Let me number let me move move the box over so I could see. Listen, we're running. And if you're unsure of how to of how to get to the chat box, if you or how to raise your hand, if you could just because uh, it's changed, they've moved the emoji or whatever it is at the bottom. Oh, and some people are putting it in the chat. So thank you. Okay. How many are educators? How many? Oh, I see someone raised their hand. Thank you, Jeffrey. How many are allied? Okay, everyone's got the hands going. I love it. How many are associate? Professional? And industry partners? How many industry partners do we have today? One, two, three, four, five, six. Um, looks like six. Okay. But that's just what I'm seeing with the hands. Okay. I can't see everyone if you actually raised your hand. Okay. All right. So, okay. So the, this should be interesting. So <laughs> this may take a while, but um, if you want to then uh, if everyone could raise their hands again. Okay, so for this, we do have a few topics, but let's just raise your hand or do it on the screen for your top three that you're interested in. Maybe even enter it into the chat. What about if they enter it yeah, into the Yeah, they can enter it into the chat as well. Because then we'll have, we can go back to it and really see what, um, what the top three topics are. Is it's everyone like, able to me. do that? Let me just jump in here a second because someone asked how to see us all. And oh, if you, you have to request. Move your that. arrow up at the top of the speaker box, the picture. You'll see there's like a bar, uh, a rectangle, two rectangles, and then a group of six, of nine. Can they see it here? So like you can choose your the, grid. Uh, two rectangles on each other. And that'll bring the bring us down. Oh, okay. okay. Is that good? Is that better? Thank you for whoever gave that feedback. Okay. All right. So, well, just Teresa, if you could please go through those answers, just so um, before we exit, that we could at least get we can get some uh, an informal survey. Okay. So for this one again, just choose your top three of interest to you. So business business methods and tools. See some hands going up. Okay. Okay. All Technology. Right. Lighting and design. Sustainability. Wellness. Aging in place. Multi-generational living.
kitchen and bath design, product design, and, and if anyone has any other ideas or any other topics that are of interest to you, please put them in the chat box as well, and we would love to hear about them. Great. Thank you, Virginia. Okay. Charles is now going to be reviewing a new point system that the board's developed. Take I want it away. to thank everybody for being here today. And what we have here is our uh, points for free membership. So we'll be giving out two memberships at the end of the year. And these are the points that you'll get for uh, participation in all of these activities only need a hundred points and then you're in the drawing so it's real easy but it's something that we give back to our members keep everybody engaged with us and uh, just make you know this help, help us get through this year and because it's virtual we want to try to do our best we have a lot of activities planned for this year and I think it's just a great way to give back and, and share with the membership, you know. Awesome. Uh, I see some so comments. if you have any questions, just shoot me an email. And, uh, you know, but it's quite simple. It's quite straightforward. And okay. I want to thank uh, Linda Kitson for, for uh, spotting this with another chapter and putting this, putting this uh, together for us. Yeah, this is great. And we should put this up on the website as well. Mm -hmm. Yes. So this will be for everyone's review and we'll also post it on Facebook. Okay. Big thank you to Susan Globus for helping with the strategic plan this year. Um, as always, your wisdom is, um, is welcome and it's, it's, uh, we're very grateful to have you leading us as far as our plan is. Uh, okay. All right. So um, I put the symbol up on the up on the screen because I feel like this year we're getting a little bit um, into the definition of grassroots and we're connecting a little bit more with our design community or we're trying to connect and we're really trying to develop that relationship and that collaboration with the community, even though we can't be in person. We're going to try our hardest to to create events that will best interact with all of our members. So what I did was I outlined the strategic plan um, on the screen and I broke it down. We broke down the plan into five goals. So uh, Virginia is going to read each goal and then I'll be discussing how we're addressing each goal. Okay, so our first goal, deliver consistent, timely, and engaging messaging while amplifying our media outlets and channels of communication. So with the help of our public relations specialists, as well as our digital media specialists, we will strengthen and expand social media challenge with testimonials, video content, and online networking to cement our messaging design impacts lives. Okay. And Terry will go into how. Okay, so what we're going to do is we're increasing our touch points with our members. So social is very big for us. Um, our private Facebook page will be used as an open forum for networking and exchange of ideas. So it is somewhat right now. We're trying to build that. Um, so please just join us and we'll, we'll be so much more, um, we're trying to make it much more engaging and more of a resource for all of our members. Um, another thing that we're doing is we're creating roundtable forums, which, um, which will all be online, of course. Our entire strategic plan, by the way, is planned to be online until we can't, and then we'll have to pivot and we'll have to adjust, but for now, everything will be created um, online, not in person. So these roundtable form, forums are for designers and IPs to communicate their current needs, just to increase communication amongst each other, um, just to get that feedback and, and to, you know, to supplement while we're not able to be in person. Um, so through that, we're conducting more surveys on social media as well as exit surveys. So there will be an exit survey after this as well. We love your feedback. 
um, and we need to know how we can adjust our programs even and um, just make it work, make, make your membership work best for you. And we're trying our hardest to ensure that our website includes events with sufficient advance notice. So we're working on a six week time frame right now on, or we're, we're trying to, so please be patient with us, but we are absolutely, we will have the, the website updated um, on a regular basis. Um, and then if you got the robo call, we got a few more mm. people to sign up after yesterday. <laughs> That was great. So um, I, I hope everyone is okay with them because we intend on using them at least quarterly or just for, um, we have an event coming up on uh, October 28th with Mark Sykes. So, you know, if you can join us then, that's going to be really exciting talking about his new book. Um, so just things like that, just as a reminder. So we will try not to abuse it. Um, but we're continuing just to ensure that even our press highlights how design impacts lives. And with the help of Sarah P. Fletcher Communications, thank you. She is awesome. She's been so much help. And we also have a new social media marketing um, company that we're working with as well for digital media to, so that we can plan our Instagram and our Facebook and, and keep that um, just to, uh, keep that on schedule and keep it up to date um, so that it, it's automated um, for the most part. This is a tremendous help and where we feel the, the direction that we need to be in at this point. Okay, Virginia. Okay, so our second goal is to ensure our brand is credible and delivers recognizable benefits and value to our stakeholders by determining what members value. Okay, so how are we doing this? So again, surveying members to ask current needs and following up with, so we're, we are surveying our current members, but we're also following up with our non-renewing members and finding out, you know, what it is, how can we help out, um, what's valued, what, you know, what did we do right, what did we do wrong, and how can we increase the value to your membership? Um, so value is, is a really big um, thing that we, we're focusing on. Um, we're also, as Diane mentioned, we're establishing a student mentorship program, which is not just for students, but for even for designers who, who are maybe they're new designers and they feel like they need a mentorship, or maybe you're a, you know, a designer who, who never had a, a, a mentor and feels like you could, you could use that, um, that backing to promote your, your career development and, and also professional certification, Diane Gote is leading the way for that. So thank you, Diane. Um, we're also funding the CUBE practice class, which is starting in January. So I think I had another screen. Yeah, so, all right, so the next screen, <laughs> I added this one, Virginia. So if you're interested in learning more about our membership program, if you could please, in the Q&A, put your name, and we'll be gathering all this information. Um, Teresa, if you could please note that, or someone who can read the Q&A. And then also, who else is interested in taking the CIDQ exam and is interested in our Q practice? Please also enter your name and we'll, we'll, uh, someone will reach out to you to talk to you more about this. Okay, Virginia. Okay. So our third goal, ensure all communication reflects our design impacts lives messaging. We will educate chapter leaders to use consistent messaging in all communication, and we will post members design impacts, live stories, videos, and student projects. Okay, so the, yeah. Sorry. Okay. Oh, yeah, you're, you're, you're the how. <laughs> yeah, this, it just doesn't say how. Okay, so <laughs> our public relations specialist, which is Sarah P. Fletcher, um, she'll return, she'll continue to reach out to media outlets, strengthen our relationship and our message of design impacts lives and will assess the effectiveness of the strategy and then we'll act on it. So as always, keep an eye on your inbox. Um, Sarah is constantly sending out alerts on, um, on uh, promotional or um, PR opportunities um, for both residential and commercial. Um, we'll also publicize DEA winners to show how design impacts lives. And if you were part of the Design um, Excellence Awards, um, 
and if you filled out the the application you'll know that we really focused a focus last year was on design impacts lives and um i feel like they they accomplished that through the new the new um method okay so our next goal is to lead diversity and inclusion efforts within our profession. Okay, so we're going to continue to develop communications to include images and contents that represent diverse ethnicities, ages, and work stages. Hold on, my, uh, my lights are going now. My office. Okay, does that every half hour. <laughs> Sustainable. All right. Um, so we'll develop content and opportunities appealing to a diverse uh, audience and we are going to, we're working on collaborating with other design organizations as well. So you will see more of that in the future. Okay. Our fifth goal. Let me move our box you can just read that. Yeah. We will create a new portfolio a portfolio of new and innovative offerings to generate alternative revenue by evaluating and assessing our programs to increase the sustainability of our chapter. Okay, so this is really then reflective of our new sponsorship package. And thank you so much for the board for, um, for really pulling together and helping put this, um, this sponsorship package together. Um, it really was a true collaboration um so if you can see like this really outlines and reflects our strategic plan starting with blueprint magazine to e-blasts and robocalls and um webinars with ceus and our book clubs um that we plan on so just a little bit i think this is um going to be i'm hoping this will be very successful is our book club program where um so our first book club author will be mark sykes and he will be talking about his second book, More Beautiful, um, and talking about how he built his brand. So it all goes back to how design impacts lives. Um, it's, that's one, one area that, um, of book club authors that we're reviewing. But we're also going to be um, talking to business book club, business book authors as well. Um, and so, Keep your eyes um, open for those. Ah, okay, so I'd like a, if we could do another raise of hands, I have to, we're how curious. How do you get your information? Okay. Yeah, how do you get your information? Um, what is the best way that we can, can give you information um, moving forward into the future? We so. left out telephone. Oh my God, robocall! Robocall! I did leave off telephone. <laughs> my favorite okay. choice. Oh my gosh! So if anyone, if everyone could put in the Q and A, please, how you prefer to receive your information. So whether and we'll it's gather email, that at the end, Instagram, Facebook, or robocall. Yeah, and we'll be sharing the results of all of these because I think this could also be valuable information even for um, for our industry partners or for, you know, for, for anyone who needs to disseminate um, information, like where are people, where are people getting their information these days, you know, is it from Instagram or, or are you on email overload, you know, so we need to know that. And believe it or not, that is the end of our presentation. Um, so we're nothing without the great work of our volunteers. And remember, many hands make light work. So if you are interested in volunteering, and thank you so, so much for, for those of you who did sign up to volunteer, we'll be reaching out to you um, in the next week or so. And the next steps will be that our board directors will be reaching out to volunteers and um, working on our strategic plan further. And I'm gonna open this up to questions and feedback, please. So we can, um, and I'm gonna close off my screen. I'm gonna stop screen sharing, because I know we have, I see some Q&A.
Okay. So it looks, does anyone have any So, questions? okay, so we can't see you right now, Jeffrey. So just so you all know, we can't see anyone but the speaker. So how can you see us? That's what, Teresa, are you there? Her, her mic is off right now. Teresa, uh, if you could ask people please to raise your hand. Personal selection, if you hover over your Zoom screen, usually in the upper right hand corner, you'll have the option for different views. Uh, speaker view will follow the person that is speaking. If you go to the gallery view, you should be able to see, depending on the size of your screen, up to like nine to 12 people at a time. Okay, so there is a question at the bottom, Terry. Okay. What do you see November and December looking like in terms of chapter activities? Okay, so for November, we're working on, um, on getting a speaker. Um, I don't wanna say who the speaker is because we haven't, guaranteed a spot yet, um, but we are looking at a, a book club author for November and then also uh, a speaker and then roundtable the round discussions as well. We so we, get, yeah, we can put together a round tables in time for that. Yeah, and that's something that we can, you know, that doesn't take as much time, like those can be developed um, rather quickly. So we'll be giving We'll be giving you those dates and those will be put on the that's something that um that will not we can't plan a six-week turnaround on like that's from something that we we want to act on quickly and so we will we'll have more of those and then we're working on a holiday online party at this moment as well um so we'll be giving you details about that any other questions um, we, how should people, Diane, how would you like people to reach out to you about the mentor program? Because we had a couple of people mention they'd be interested in right. learning more about that. Um, I would love people to send their emails over to uh, view Teresa and we'll get a major list and, but I would also like the mentors. So if you could separate yourself as a mentee or a mentor, um, that would be great. I also want to give a, a shout out to Jonathan Barron. He's on the screen. He is new and he is the membership chair. Very happy to have him on. A lot of energy and a lot of great ideas. Absolutely. Uh, I see another question. Sorry, Teresa. Um, I see another question from Jeffrey McCullough. I'm interested in learning more about the internship program. We're working on that. And I know you're talking about a New Jersey chapter internship program so yes that is something that we will be will be adding and we're hoping that that's even a part of our facebook group um, as a method of communication um, and then the so that i might be a mentor that's awesome diane gote there you go <laughs> that's great uh just for the record i did just put um out to all our members my email address which is administrator at nj.asid.org and if you send any of your questions suggestions ideas or programs you'd like to participate into that i will forward them to the appropriate um, board member or committee chair okay so um linda would you like to address this question have you ever thought about a magazine for the public uh, we have thought about that actually. Um, we were actually just in in conversation with Design NJ, and as of right now, there's a little bit of a conflict um, with some projects that are already committed for publishing. Um, we have learned that other chapters. Oh, Rug News and Design. Hi, Jonathan. <laughs> it has it has been considered. I'm not sure what you're showing me, some kind of a chart. $1,450, is that uh, the rack rate? Oh, he's on mute. So yeah, you're on mute. Can you unmute him? Can you unmute, John? We can't hear you. Teresa, I, you can unmute I, him. I, oh, so there he goes. I'll be brief here. So um, I reached out to Rug News when I received this. He's a member of IFDA 
And by the way, Sarah and I are on the board there. Um, and um, I asked him about this. He's been running this magazine for, for, for 30 years. It's 33 pages. It's glossy. He runs this magazine for 30 years. And the price I was showing you for 3,000 copies, $1,450. 3,000 copies. Now, the number one reason anyone is a designer is to make money and to reach the public. So here we are, a collaborative group of designers out to perform a service, and we have a way to do that with different marketing tools. And there's nothing more valuable today than for people to get something in their hands, a magazine. Now, social media is very important. It reads a broad audience, it does. But you speak to any marketer, and I've spoken to a couple, a printed piece in someone's hands is very valuable. So I am personally creating for my own company a quarterly magazine my market is different than your market. I'm not interested in the residential market. I'm interested in hotels in New York City. That's another conversation. But I wanted to share with you what I've done in my exploration of marketing. Yeah, this is this is great. That's great information. It's a con just a contribution. You, I'll no, an absolutely. Right now. And I think yeah, if you connect connect with um, with Linda. And then Sarah as well, because Sarah is very, um, very important part of the blueprint as well. So thank you. You're welcome. Okay. Uh, Susan Barbieri, I'd like to thank some new volunteers. Susan, you're not on the screen. Um, did you want to thank them in person, <laughs> so to speak? I don't know if she's, I don't know what happened. Okay, I'm gonna, I'll say it for her. Um, thank you, Veronica Castrillion for community service chair. Thank you so much, that's awesome. Oh, there you are, go ahead. Full time, I, I don't know why that happened, but yeah, I just wanted to quickly thank, since we were thanking volunteers before, um, Veronica Castrillon, community service. Uh, we have Mary Rita Lewis and Danielle Palmadessa, DEA chair and co-chair. Um, and Victoria Ed Blatt is a student at Berkeley College who's going to be helping out with the mentor program. Thank you all. That's awesome. Thank you, Susan. Thanks, Susan. Um, if anyone put in uh, that you're interested in an internship program and you don't have your last name on the screen, um, on your, as your screen name, if you could please add your last name as well, just so we can be certain to reach out to you. Okay. Um, anyone else? We have a few. We have a few minutes before our next presentation. Hi, Amy. I'm looking through. And it doesn't have to be a question. It can be feedback or something yeah. that you want to know more about, or. If people would like to um, hear the results of our polls between our chat and our questions, I can kind of give you those in order. That would be awesome. So Thank lowest, um, the business method came in at the highest. It's, and then it came in to wellness was the second highest. Uh, two that tied were tools for sustainability and technology. Product design came in after that, and then equally tied were lighting, kitchen and bath, marketing, hospitality, mentorship, and NCDIQ. And overwhelmingly, people prefer email for communications. Next is Instagram. And then somebody suggested personal text oh. instead of a robocall where you can do the personal text calling. Um, and uh, we had one person reach out about internships, which we're having her post to the chat. So those are the results of the questions. Mm -hmm. Okay, that's a good amount of people on. Okay, so welcome everyone. 
I'm Terry Fiore, the president of the New Jersey chapter. Um, welcome to the final portion of our leadership training. Um, so I just want to let you know, please, in the Q&A, if you have any questions, enter them and we'll address them at the end of the presentation. This is all being um, taped and put up on our YouTube channel. So you can review it later in case you did miss it. You weren't able to stay or stay for the whole thing. But we hope you are because we're going to have a few, uh, we're going to have live interaction in this um, episode. In this episode. So um, our, I'm going to give a little bio of Sal. So he is the owner of 908 Enterprises. He's a local uh, social media marketing agency that will be sharing tools to help you increase brand awareness, boost conversations and engagement, and conversation and uh, clear messaging online. So Sal, take it away. Uh, thank you very much for having me on here. I'm honored. Hopefully I can give some value to everybody that's uh, tuned in right now. Um, we're going to jump right into it. I'm going to um, start with our uh, presentation. I'm going to go through some social media tips, tricks, content tips, and then we're going to go to a live interactive session where uh, people can give their Instagram handle and I will take a look at it and give you live feedback on that. So if you want to have your phones ready for that at the end, that would be great. So just jumping into it, uh, table of contents real quick. Um, just going to give you real quick about 908 Enterprises, who we are, what we do. We're going to jump into obstacles on social media that are very common across all businesses that most people have. We're going to have a little bit of a content strategy, top five tips on how you can have good content a little bit about Facebook, a little bit about Instagram, and then we're going to jump right into the Q&A and the interactive feedback with Instagram profiles. If anybody has any specific questions about a topic, um, we can pause at the end and we can do maybe you know a few questions and then we can uh, go on to the next section. So about us, Terry said it before, we're a local marketing agency that can help you increase brand awareness, boost conversations and engagement, and convey a clear message online. We use professional photo, video, and make sure that your content is far above the competitors. So common obstacles that people can face on social media are what platform should I be on? What to post? How can I come off not too salesy? You know, you wanna come off as a real person. How do I make sure my online reputation reflects mine as a designer or an industry partner? And should I be running social media ads? You know, do you want to put money into social media or do you just want to grow it organically? And lastly, to um, tag along with that is how to track your ROI. You know, you want to make sure if you're putting money in, you want to make sure that, you know, you're getting a return on that. So just to start our top five content tips are behind the scene photos, industry tips and tricks, customer testimonials, contests and giveaways, and employee profiles. So just to touch on each of those, behind the scene photos, you wanna share snapshots of your business operations by giving behind the scene photos. It will help give people an insight onto why your business is better than the others. So for example, you know, if you're picking paint colors, you're picking fabric, you, know, you got floor plans out, you know, show people that whole process because it's definitely interesting and it can show people how you or you and your business work and it can, you know, that can be what gets you guys the sale. Next, industry tips and tricks. Tips and tricks will show that you are interested in bringing value to your followers. You're not just trying to sell them like, hey, hire me, hire my business, hire us. You know, you're trying to provide value to them. So something that you guys think is very common knowledge, you know, in the um, design world, the general public does not know it, you know, what color to pick if you want to make a room look bigger, what color to pick, you know, if um, you got a lot of whites and grays, you know, specific things that you guys know that are you think are easy or everyone should know, people don't know that. So giving tips and tricks, you know, on how to help a space or help a room that will definitely help your uh, profile. Customer testimonials, you know, this speaks for itself, you know, sharing other people's experiences with your business will help grow your reputation and give social proof. Simply just, you can use a quote and put it over a picture or just put it over a blank screen and post it to your social media. 
there's different tools that you can use to um, try to use this. Canva is probably the best free tool to use this with. You can just sign up for a free account and you can start, you know, making little text graphics that you can post all your customer testimonials. Last, um, we have uh, contests and giveaways. This will help generate engagement and bring you new followers. Choose a winner and a prize. It's, it's simple, fun, easy. Uh, it's a great way to try to get more engagement because you're gonna be giving something away. They say that you should give something away or have a contest that is related to your business. Don't just give away you know, an Amazon gift card or you know, a Starbucks gift card because it really has nothing to do with your business. The person wins it, they're not coming back. If you can um, do something that's industry specific or directly related to your business, you know, if you can give away a free, you know, consultation for, you know, a room space or um, a paying consultation, what type of fabric they should use, you know, if you can give small, something small like that, give it away along with something else, that definitely can lead to things down the road. It's definitely better than just a Amazon gift card or a Starbucks gift card. Lastly, we have employee profiles. If it's just you, you know, you can give information about you and yourself. But if you have a whole team, you know, you want to highlight your team members and show that you guys are real people. This will allow customers to get to know who you and your employees are, and it will give your social media account a personal feel. It's not just going to be, you know, selling, you know, selling the products, all salesy, like hire us, hire us, hire us. You can get to show, you know, who you guys really are. And it doesn't have to be fully related to business. You can do fun things like, you know, what's your favorite place to eat? What's your favorite ice cream? you know, what town do you live in? You know, where do you go in the summer for vacation? Things like that definitely give a personal touch to a uh, account. Okay, moving along to Facebook. Just some quick uh, Facebook tips. You wanna make sure that you have a business page set up for your Facebook page. Uh, you wanna fill out all the information and sections you can. This will help your page come up when people search on Facebook. Um, next, profile and banner photos. Avoid changing your profile picture because this is how people are gonna recognize you and your page. If you wanna interchange things or have event-based photos, you can use that for your banner. You, know, you can have upcoming events or you know, a new room that you designed, stuff like that. The profile picture, you definitely want to keep the same. The banner is what you can interchange. Community pages, these are a great way to connect with people, but you must join them and engage with them and comment, like, share. You can only do it from a personal account. So you can't do it from your actual business page. So if you were going to do, you know, um, like just a community page, let's just use Summit, for example, or Millburn Short Hills, you want to join that page with your personal account and engage with it with that account. You cannot use your business page. Next, Facebook ads. Facebook ads are a very useful tool. Uh, they're gonna help you reach new clients and customers. You can target, there's, you know, we could talk about this for countless hours, but you can target them and people that do not like your page or would have not seen your post are going to see, you know, your, your photo, your video, whatever you're posting. I'm sure everyone has seen an ad before that they haven't liked the page and it just pops up in their feed. That's what you can do with Facebook ads. Instagram, um, the big, this is what we're gonna touch on at, once we finish the uh, presentation, we're gonna start with the interactive uh, Instagram reviews. So on Instagram, you wanna make sure you have a bio and you wanna make sure that your profile is converted to a business profile. And when you convert it to a business profile, you can link it with your Facebook business page. So they work hand in hand. You definitely wanna make sure that you convert to a business profile. Um, for your bio, make sure you use emojis. You know, use things that can catch people's eyes. Uh, you wanna use line breaks. You, want it, you don't want it to be too cluttered with words. You want it to be appealing to the eye and people can pick up what you do right off the bat just from looking at your bio. Uh, and be, be sure to use the link in your bio. This is the only place that you can click on Instagram and leave Instagram. If you put a link in a post, 
you're not going to be able to leave Instagram. It's just going to be text. It's not going to be clickable. You have to put, you know, in the post, you know, click the link in our bio and that link in the bio is the only thing that people can click on to leave Instagram. Now, just below the uh, bio are highlights. These are fairly new. Um, these are a great tool. You definitely want to utilize them. This allows you to create a mini menu for your profile. You want to keep these updated and make sure you do not have more than five different categories. You can have more than them, but if you do, then people will have to actually scroll over on the categories to see what else there is. And you know, nine times out of 10 people do not know that or they're not going to scroll. So you want to have five categories that definitely fit your business. You know, you, for example, you guys can use um, employees as one, uh, business as another, community as one, uh, before and afters with your work, you know, behind the scenes with work or, um, you know, finished products, you know, a finished room or a finished house that you guys just designed. That can be another category. You can get creative with it, but you definitely want to have five different categories and do not have more than that. Next are Instagram stories. That is how you add to your highlight. You need to post a story and then on the bottom after it's posted, it will say add to highlight. So that's how you can keep adding to your highlights. But stories are definitely the best tool you can use on Instagram. Utilizing stories and all the features will allow your profile to rank better in the newsfeed. So when people go to the explore uh, section and they're scrolling, people that you see on there are people that utilize stories and they utilize everything in the story as well that's capable. Uh, like, you know, the, um, the at tags, um, the location tag, there's all different things that you want to use on there, you know, stickers, um, the poll, there's all different kinds of things, voting, you want to use all those different stickers that will help you rank in the um, explore section of Instagram. Next is IGTV and Instagram Live. This is the full video section on Instagram. Um, IGTV lets you post full length videos and Instagram Live gives you the opportunity to actually go live and show your all authentic side. There is no, you know, editing. It's just you and the camera and, you know, you're just talking to your audience. So IGTV is definitely great because you can post full length videos and you can post shorter teasers for that on your actual feed and then share those to your story that are linked to the IGTV. That's definitely a great way to, you know, create content and then create multiple pieces of content from just one video. You can post little teasers and then link it back to that actual IGTV video. So this is a example of a Instagram profile. You have the uh, profile picture, you have the name, then you have the bio. You can see the bio utilizing emojis with um, just you know one or two words that tells what you do. So when somebody looks at this, they know right off the bat what we do. Lastly, on the bottom, you can see that there is the um, link to click on, and that link usually stays the same. That's our giveaway. It's uh, the top five content tips. It's a full PDF rundown. Basically, you guys just got it, but it's a P it's a printable PDF that you can use that um, explains the, the five categories and what to post in each of those. And then on the bottom, you can see there's five different highlights that correspond with each service that we provide. Uh, this is uh, just a quick um, ad campaign. If you guys are gonna be running Facebook ads, Instagram ads, this is just a quick rundown on kind of how we do it. It's gonna be very brief. So. It's a Facebook or Instagram ad. You want to, you, usually you want to give something of value. So it definitely wants to be like a contest or giveaway. Those are the best kind of um, ads to run. We're going to run that ad. You're going to reach new people with targeted ads. So you're going to target based on your business. You know, who's most likely to visit your business, come into your business or hire you guys. Then in return for giving them that free giveaway, you're going to collect contact information. And then from there, you're going to add the leads to your pipeline. And then you're going to continue with your sales process as you add them to your pipeline. And that is the end of the presentation. 
we kind of just wanted to run through it real quick because I feel like the value is definitely going to be the Q and A and the Instagram reviews. So if we want to jump, uh, jump into the Q and A first, or you want to do the Instagram reviews, it, um, they definitely both work. So whatever you guys want to do. Okay. Can we, Charles, can, uh, Charles, can you um, show yourself on the screen? So can we use Charles as our guinea pig? Yeah, definitely. Is, and is then um, I'm just going to, uh, Okay. okay, and then I'll just uh, stop sharing the screen. Okay. What's your Instagram, Charles? All right, I'll, say I'll let you take it. I don't want to. I think I already have it pulled up. It's a book of passwords. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't think I had a... C-S-S-L-D-R, right? That's it. That's it. All right, so... Um... Can we, we start are, with, yeah. his, with what oh, he? I need to get on there, right? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. No, I I have your profile already pulled up. Uh, C S S L D R, correct? Yeah. Yeah. So, um, basically, you just created the um profile. You didn't do anything with it, right? I didn't go in. I didn't go into yeah. anything there at all. Yeah. No problem. Yeah. So definitely, you want to uh, create a bio like we talked about. You want to use emojis. You want to kind of make it interactive and fun that people can catch their attention. Um, you want to try to convert to a business profile. If you can, if you have a Facebook business page, you can link them. And once you kind of set that up, you just kind of want to start posting and go from there. But so what I have set up there is a business. Uh, I'm not sure. I can't see it because there's no, um, there's no content or there's no the bio. Content. All right. So I'll, yeah. I'll get in there and, and, and set that up. Yeah. How do you you just, know Sorry, so, um, someone's asking, it, it's just, it ties in with this. How do you know if you're a business profile? Um, you'll see on the bottom that there'll be a contact option. If you go to somebody's profile, you'll see that it'll, it'll be contact, email, call. There'll be, a, there'll be a contact button. If there's not, they might not have it activated. But if you want to check yourself, you would just go to settings and then um, it's in settings and you would just go to your profile. And you can toggle back and forth between being a business profile and being a personal one. And you toggle back and forth by going to the top, right? Of and just clicking. No, that would be yeah. uh, that would be different accounts. I'm talking about if you want to switch from a business profile to a personal profile okay. on your exact account, you would go to settings, and you would click on settings, and then you would click on account, and you can switch back between a personal account or switch back to a business account. Ah, okay. Yeah, but definitely, uh, Charles, the bio is definitely the biggest um, thing you want to work on first. Once you get that done, then you can start to worry about, you know, what link you want to put in the bio, then start, start to get a content plan. But bio is definitely the biggest thing on Instagram. Do you know how to do that now, Charles? Well, Hold on, I'm, I'm trying to get in here. Um, all right, so I just got on and I got everybody else's name or connections. So I'm gonna go to a little house. Are you on a computer? I'm on a computer. Yeah, you're not gonna be able to do it from a computer. You have to do it uh, strictly from mobile. You can view um, Instagram profiles from a computer, but you can't do all the editing and stuff like that. Oh. Because it's a mobile based platform. iPad. Yes, yes, you can yes. use an iPad okay. or, or iPhone. All right, or so I'll, I'll get back into this at a, uh, at a later, de later day, later today. Can so, I ask you a question about um, how Charles set up his, mm -hmm. his I did it on I did it on my computer when I set this up. Yeah, I mean, you can do simple stuff from the computer, but doing the bio and um, adding highlights and doing all posting, you definitely want to be on the... So this is strictly a, 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 mo a mobile app yeah. program? For, for the most part, to utilize all the functions, you definitely want to be using it on a phone or an iPad or something. And there's like that. a download of, of an app for that? Yes, but even the iPad is, it's kind of, it, it's not as, it's a little finicky. The best thing to use is a mobile device. The phone? Yes, definitely. 
Okay, so um, Lisa's asking, so to switch from a, biz a personal to a business, you go to settings, yeah. account, and mm -hmm. then where do you go to? Um, you would go to settings, account, and then it's right at the bottom of that. And then you go to account, and then it's on the bottom. It'll be in blue. It says switch to personal account or switch to business account. Okay. Do you see that, Lisa? Okay, great. <laughs> okay. All right. So I got to download Instagram. Mm -hmm. Okay. Photo sharing. Okay. Okay. Do you want to look at someone else's account while Charles? <laughs> yeah, definitely. <laughs> I'm <that>? sorry. <laughs> no That's problem. Okay. Uh, how about Lisa Anisco Isaac? Lisa, is that your Instagram handle? You know, he, he was going to work with me. He didn't, he didn't sorry, I know. While well, you're working yeah. on that, <laughs> I don't want to take over, but yeah. Yes. Okay. That that's her name. Um, yeah. So if you yeah, can I see look it. at okay. Um. So right off the bat, like we were talking about the bio, you definitely want to add a bio. You have a link in your um, profile, which is definitely good. You definitely want to add a, a bio, you know, like we talked about, you know, either services or stuff that's related to you as a designer or you as a business. Um, the content definitely looks good. You definitely have a variety of content and you have a personal picture, which is good. So people can see a face with a name and you have some work pictures, which are definitely good. So it's definitely a good mix of content. I think you just want to work on the bio and the content's <laughs> definitely good. Just keep being a real person and posting, you know, posting work and personal stuff. There's nothing wrong with that, that, you know, shows you're a real person and you're trying to connect with your followers, not just trying to sell them. So definitely good content. I would just definitely work on the, the bio. This is what I'm getting on my phone. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. You got to go to the app store. You're on Safari. It looks like. Oh, Okay. The app story, I know all about that. Yeah, it, it's uh, blue. Not that bad. Okay. Um, Renee, yeah. can you please add your, you want an Instagram, Renee is requesting an Instagram review. Yeah. Can you put in, mm -hmm. um, in a Q&A your Instagram handle? Yeah. So Lisa, definitely awesome, uh, awesome content. Just work on the bio. And then Jonathan Barron is asking to also look at his Instagram as well. Okay. Okay. You so, want me to do uh, Jonathan first or? Uh, sure. Well, she's, yeah. Well, okay. Renee is. Right here. Ah. Oh, awesome. is that photo and video? Get. That's it. Yeah. Uh, Jonathan, definitely uh, awesome profile right off the bat. Nice logo. You guys have a full bio. You got a clickable link. You got the location, contact button. You got highlights. And you are using the, uh, the tile method of posting, which is really awesome for designers. This looks sick. Yeah. What's so, the, what is that? It's an it's a app that, um, if you guys can see, the, uh, the pictures, there's six pictures that make one picture. Uh -huh. And then if you scroll, you can see okay. that that's, def that's definitely an advanced, um, that's definitely advanced. It looks awesome. There's an app that you can use to uh, create that. It cuts the picture into six perfectly and you just post in the order it gives you, but this looks awesome. And for What's designers, called? sorry, um, there's a, there's a bunch of them, uh, just a uh, grid post for Instagram. I'm pretty sure. Great. All right. So this, this wants to set up an account on a different email for me. Than what I set up. You would just have to log in with the email that you set up in the, uh, probably maybe using different email. Just to download this for the phone. It's okay. Yeah. Yeah. Because it's whatever email you have with the app store and then you use whatever email you oh, then, oh, then, signed then up I with. Change yeah. Everything. Mm -hmm. then I, then I, okay. So, yeah. 
Yeah, this is good. If everyone goes to, um, like Jonathan Barron suggested, if you go to his Instagram, yeah. look at it as we're talking through, so then you everyone can see yeah. exactly. No, this is this is awesome. Yeah, it looks great. And for designers, I feel like this definitely showcases, you know, the rooms or the spaces that you guys are designing. It really can, you know, it looks very appealing to the eye. It definitely catches your attention. I like it. Definitely. Okay. Um, Kelly Malloy had put it in earlier. When you're yeah. ready. What is her name? It's just Kelly, Kelly Malloy. Mill, M I L. Oh, okay, I see. Mill. M I L L H D. Not down. All right. Right here. Okay. Kelly. I'm sorry. So I can look at it. And we can all. M I L L H U R S T D C. It's not taking. It says touch ID, so I put my thumb down, and then it just goes back to get. It's not taking. Is this Kelly's? Yes. Yes. Yeah, okay. that's Kelly's. This is pretty. Okay, so Kelly definitely looks <laughs> awesome right off the bat. Um, the bio, the only thing I would do is try to convert that into like a bulleted point type bio. You can do that in the notes app. If you, if you pre-write it in the notes app and put the line spaces in when you hit return, then you just copy and paste it and it'll show up like that. It'll just kind of break it up and make it look less wordy. Uh, but you have the website, which is awesome. You have a location, which is great. You got the contact button. So you're a business profile. Uh, the content definitely looks awesome. You have a mix of holiday. I like you have the holidays. You have um, different work that you guys do. You have uh, text text pictures like um, like Happy Thursday. If you you know different types of quotes and memes like that, definitely looks awesome. And the only thing, the content definitely looks awesome. The only thing is, I would I would showcase if you guys are comfortable. Oh, you got one picture here. Showcase who you guys are, and you know show a little personal side of you guys. But other than that, the pictures look awesome. You guys are posting on holidays, which is great. Definitely gives a personal feel. And you're posting memes, which definitely breaks up the, uh, the business posts. So definitely the content's awesome. The only thing I would do is, like I said, just make that bio into more of a bulleted point bio and you know, maybe post a little more of a personal feel, but definitely awesome, awesome uh, Instagram. Sal, I have a question about this one because yeah. uh, it's so pretty. Mm -hmm. How do you, and she has 464 posts. Yeah. How does she increase her followers? Like what, how, you know, there are, it's a, it's a, a good number, but how do you increase that number even, even higher so, without buying? Followers? Yeah. Well, no, you definitely don't want to buy followers, but, um, you definitely want to utilize, uh, if you're using paid advertising, I don't know if you guys are or not, but that's a, a way to reach new people. And if you're not, if you don't want to do that, or you're, you know, not happy with what you're doing with the paid advertising, you know, posting, utilizing hashtags. I, I see you guys do use hashtags. So that should help you come up, but utilizing the stories and utilize uh, Instagram story. And then you want to post using, when you post a story, use the stickers and use a location sticker because that will help you come up in the location story of the explorer. So for anybody that didn't follow that, if you post an Instagram story, you want to use a location sticker that tags that location with that story post. And when you go to the explorer, that story will pop up or that post will pop up in the explorer that is connected with that location. So for example, um, where are you guys out of? You guys are out of Manalapan. So if you post, you know, Manalapan location, P anybody in Manalapan, people that are down the shore, you know, for the summer or whatever, they're in that location. So when they're scrolling through your, your posts and your stories will pop up if you tag Manalapan and connect it with that post. So do you recommend always tagging like your local, you know, your local yeah, definitely app? utilize, definitely use locations on your actual posts and, tr and try to use 
different stickers when you post Instagram stories. You definitely want to use a location one because then it, it takes, it tags that post as like a Manalapin or like a Point Pleasant or wherever you are down the shore. It tags that exact um, location and it'll come up on people's news feeds and explorers that are in that location. Linda Kitson is asking, what Instagram are we looking at? We're looking at Millhurst DC, M-I-L-L-H-U-R-S-T-D-C. Yeah, definitely awesome. Content definitely looks awesome and the profile definitely looks good. So the only thing I would say was definitely um, try to break up the bio using line breaks and you can pre-write it in notes. So Sal, I got to a screen that asked for password and mm -hmm. it won't take my password. Um, is the password correct? Yeah. Sorry. <laughs> they <know> for sure. <laughs> All right, we'll come back to you. <laughs> yeah, and, and tell me. Um, all right, Sarah. Can we, all right, can we look at another one? How about Sarah at S B C I N T? Yeah, okay. Definitely. That's and if anybody has any questions or comments on what I'm saying about your profile, just, you know, put it in the chat and we can talk about it. Okay. Um, awesome. You guys have a lot of posts. So again, right off the bat, your, um, your bio, same thing. You want to try to pre-write that in the notes app and use line breaks. It definitely is more, it, it's much easier on the eyes and it's easier to kind of see it and re read it right off the bat. It looks much less wordy when you do it bulleted point like that. But you have, the, uh, you have a clickable link, you have your location, you got a contact button, so you're a business profile. You have highlights, which is good. You got one uh, category. I would definitely try to add to that, but your content definitely looks good. You have a good mix of, you know, there's people on here, which is great. You definitely want to see real people. Um, you have a dog. That's awesome too. That can help connect with people. Um, you have memes, which are a good breakup from actual. All right. You have memes on there, which are a good breakup from your actual work posts and the posts that are, um, you have a good behind the scenes photo. This is a great behind the scenes photo for anybody. That's definitely awesome. Showing the different uh, textures um, for the vinyl wall coverings. That definitely looks great. But, you know, showing the behind the scenes and what you're working on, that's definitely a great type of post. And then you have actual finished rooms and finished products, which looks great, too. Yeah, definitely awesome. The, like I said, the only thing I would do is try to fix that bio. That'll definitely um, put your profile to the next level. One of our members is quickly putting their dog up. <laughs> there you go. Hey, it's a, it, it's a personal feel. You're not going to connect with people that like dogs. Okay. Should we go to the fabric shield next, Terry? Yeah. Oh. Go to where? Renee, the fabric shield. Oh, okay. Yes. Where Bobby is, what that. is the, uh, I didn't see it. I missed that. Oh, in the Q and A. Oh my gosh, I'm missing the whole. Yeah, Q there's a lot of Q and A. We need to. <laughs> yeah. Okay, sorry. At the Fabric Shield. Yeah, at the Fabric um, Shield. Fabric <laughs> Shield. So, um, the right off the bat, uh, I don't know if it'll work for your bio, just because you guys have a list of all your um, the states you're in, I guess. So, I, I guess I would just leave your bio as is. That's definitely um, fine, even though it's not listed out. Oh, you have a link tree app, which is great. All right. So anybody that doesn't. <laughs> what? Is... <laughs> right? Can I so I hit this. Oh, you're on Instagram.com. You got to get the <laughs> mobile app. <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> okay. All right. So the fabric did you... shield you did that. <laughs> what? I did you need, download the app? You would the, think Instagram.com is like Instagram. No, right? no, no, no. You need the actual Instagram app. So oh. did you, if you download it from the app store, I don't know if you did, but you'd want to go to the app store, type in Instagram, and then download the actual app. Don't go to Instagram.com because it's going to get messed up. 
Okay, I have a question in between from Amy. Yes. Um, do you have a recommendation for a free app that will easily create a white border around the photos for Instagram? Yeah, use Canva. Canva. Yeah, you're gonna have to manually do it, but you can make a template and then just uh, put basically a clear square with a white border on it. And then you can just use that and post on your Instagram. Yeah. But Canva is definitely the best tool. Anybody that uses it, there's so much more you can do with it. If you're not using it, definitely go sign up. It's free. There's a, there's a paid uh, service. I mean, we're, we, we, we have the paid one, but the free one, you can do countless things on it. It's definitely a great tool to use. Definitely uh, underutilized. So back to the fabric shield. Like I said, I don't know if it's going to work for your bio just because you have a list of all the states. So I just leave it as is. But I was going to say, you guys have a Linktree app. So that's definitely great because Linktree basically acts as like a mini menu, mini landing page. I mean, if you have your own website, you could just make your own. But Linktree definitely is easy to use that you can interchange all the links and add different stuff to them. So in, when you do a post, you say, you know, click link in bio, but you would have to interchange that specific link. So let's say, you know, you have a, you know, a networking event that was, you know, a month ago and you did posts for that, all your posts would say, click the link in the bio and it would be your networking one. But if you just did a new room or there's a new consultation type uh, link that you guys have, I don't know what you would be using another link for, but if you have a separate link that you're going to do for a new event or, you know, a new room that you want to showcase or a video link, and you just did that post like a week ago, it's going to say link in bio and the link in bio is not going to match all the different stuff you have. If you use a link tree app, uh, a link tree link, you can have multiple, it's like a landing page. You can have multiple clickable links on it. So definitely utilize link tree. That's definitely great that you guys have that. Um, I'm right back here again. Yeah. So install that. Where'd you go? Oh, oh, it's installing now. I don't know what the hell. Maybe I hit it with this thumb. Now, okay, so, okay, now it says open. Yay. So the content um, definitely looks good. You guys have a Create new account. So I guess whatever I did online is. No, you can log in. Uh, you would just click. Um, oh, yeah, there's a log login in on the okay, bottom. Never mind. Yeah, yeah, they had that too. Yeah, so for um, the Fabric Shield, the content definitely looks good. You guys got um, product and business photos. You have, you know, funny memes that are not related to business, like National Coffee Day, stuff like that. You got family pictures, which is great. And you have uh, personal pictures too. You got dogs on there as well. That's definitely great. You recognize that family. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Mom with you. So... Definitely, um, definitely good content. And um, yeah, there's really nothing that I would do with the profile other than I don't know if you want to relook at the bio. But like I said, I don't know if it'll work since you guys have everything listed out. So definitely, definitely looks awesome. Definitely good mix of content. You guys are definitely doing good stuff. And the link tree app is uh, the link tree link is definitely, definitely good to utilize if anybody wants to utilize that as well. It's free. It's free also. Incorrect password. It's like, oh, sorry. All right, can you, Sal, can you look at um, Tammy's? This is on, yeah. from uh, my images underscore in underscore design. And then someone else had a question about what hashtags designers should be using as well. Um, that's definitely um, up to you and your business, but I would utilize five to 10 specific hashtags. So you want to utilize, um, well, I mean, it's a, design's a very broad thing. I don't know if you guys want to use paint or furniture, you know, flooring, whatever you guys are involved in. You want to use specific ones to that, whatever you're posting about. And then you want to also utilize ones that are more broad, like, you know, community type hashtags. You know, if you're, you know, like I said, um, where was, uh, they don't have a link on there, but, um, Bar uh, we'll go back to, where was it? SBC, they're in Short Hills. Yeah, SBC, they were in Short Hills. So they want to utilize, you know, hashtag Short Hills, hashtag Milburn, hashtag Summit. You want to utilize towns as well because that'll help come up. That'll help your posts come up in the news feed as well. So you want to use design specific ones, like specific things that you're posting about 
I don't know like exact specific terms, but you know, you want to use the exact fabric you're using or the exact pillows you guys got or the exact flooring you're using. And then more broad stuff like New Jersey, local business networking. So you want to have five to 10 mixed ones. You want to have broad ones and specific ones. Can I ask you a question about that? Is it better to um, have hashtags that like a million people are following or, you know, 5,000 people? Like what, is there a sweet spot as for? Um, you definitely, I mean, a million, you're going to get lost. Like if you just do TB, I mean, you can just do motivation Monday or TBT, you know, just throw that in there. There's no problem with that, but you want to have specific in specific hashtags with that as well. So if you do like a TBT, you want to have the exact thing you want to have like, you know, short Hills, New Jersey, or, you know, Milburn, or, um, if you're doing, you know, whatever the type of pillows you guys are, your, you know, the fabric, anything specific that you guys are designing or whatever is in the actual picture, whatever table or furniture or wood or, you know, whatever specific to that photo, use that and then use a broad, um, hashtag as well, but okay. five to 10, don't, don't go over 10 because, um, it's not good anymore. You used to be able to put like 30 and you know, you'd be seen on all of them and it was definitely great to use, but those days are kind of over. You want to use five to 10 good quality hashtags. Okay. Great. Okay. I have a question from Amy that I mm -hmm. missed. Um, can you review again, the value of switching to a business profile? I recently changed my personal profile to a business profile, but I really would prefer for it to be personal as it contains images of my kids, et cetera, things I would prefer oh. to be more private. Should yeah. I have two personal profiles, one for business purpose and one for personal? Um, the benefit of having a business profile is you can, you have more features to use. You have the contact, different contact buttons. You have a location option you have. Um, and then you can link it with your Facebook business page as well. So you, um, linking both of those definitely is useful. And then on top of that, you can schedule posts for a business profile. You cannot schedule posts for a personal one. If you're using like Hootsuite or some type of social media scheduler, and you can run paid advertising on it. If you have personal one, you cannot, um, do any of that. You just have to post when you're ready to post and there's no paid advertising. It just is what it is. So to answer a question, I would definitely have two, you know, you want to keep your family and kids, you know, if they're younger, obviously private, but on your business page, there's no problem with, you know, posting a couple personal pictures. They don't have to be fully loaded with it, but you know, you want to have some type of personal feel to it. You know, not listen, not, it doesn't have to be your kids, but you want to have some type of personal feel. You don't just want it to be strictly business because then, you know, people are, don't think that you really care about the followers and you're just worried about people calling you and hiring you. What's a good ratio? Um, from business to personal? No, for, um, yeah, from like you're showing your kids. Um, maybe like, yeah, it doesn't have to be kids. Obviously it can be like, or you know, whatever. even, even showing, you know, the town you live in, like the downtown, you know, you're at a local coffee shop. You're not going to Starbucks. You're going to, you know, wherever it is. Um, like we we're talking about somebody in Manalapan, like a Manalapan local coffee shop, not Starbucks. Like you're posting in there that can count as a personal community type post. It doesn't have to always be a person or, you know, your kids or family, something like that. That counts as personal because it's not technically business related. It's showing that you're a real, you're a real person, real member of a community. So, I mean, you can mix them in. I don't know four to one, five to one, maybe whatever you guys want to do three to one. Everybody's different. So it really, you know, there's no set number to it, but you don't want it to be all business. Right. Okay. Thank you. Um, um, Who's next? Nada. Who is next? Nada. Uh, can you check out N-A-D-A dot F dot A-L-Z-O-U-B-I. N A D A dot F as in Frank. Yeah. A L Z O U B I. Okay. Okay. So, um, right off the bat, you're definitely going to want to, I don't think this is a business profile. I can't tell, but I don't think it is. Um, you want to definitely create, um, a, a bio because there's no bio here. There's no information about anything. So you definitely want to create a bio. Um, you definitely want to create, um, a link, a clickable link for your bio. 
And then if this is a business page, I don't know if this is your business or your person. I don't know what you, what route you want to go with this, but if it's going to be a business page, you want to have that contact button because people can call you, email you, message you right from Instagram. They don't have to leave. So that's definitely an awesome feature that the business uh, page offers. And the content, the pictures look neat. They definitely look awesome. Um, but I would definitely work on a, work on the bio first. And then after you do that, decide if you want this to be a personal one or a business one, and then come up with a content strategy, you know, utilize the five tips we talked about the different five categories. You know, you want to have business, you want to have behind the scenes, you want to have employees or yourself, you know, contests and giveaways, you know, stuff like that, but definitely start with the bio and then work on the, uh, content plan. Okay. Um, so do you, uh, Nadal would also like to learn more and this is good for everyone involved. Yeah. Uh, can we contact you privately after? Yes. Yeah. You can just email info at 908 ent.com. Okay. Okay. Just looking through to make sure I think, yeah. um, I know Susan, uh, had a question. I'm concerned about privacy. Does Instagram connect to my private Facebook page? Did you answer that? Um, yeah, you, we didn't talk about that, but you can do that if you want. You don't have to, but you can connect personal Instagram and personal Facebook page so you can share, you know, back and forth cross platform. If you post to Instagram, you can, there's a button to um, toggle the on or off that you can share it directly to your um, Facebook, personal Facebook page. And if you're... <laughs> I think we I, forgot. The <laughs> we forgot Tammy. We had started. Sorry. Yeah. Sorry. Did we start? Charles. Charles, are you still working on that? Yes. <laughs> There's now a, I just got in. Now it says something follow and oh. Did we just forget images and design? So why are there other people here? We looked at that. I was yeah. Oh, uh, let's do images and design. Yeah, we we got okay. sidetracked from that. Yeah. <laughs> so this is what came up, but it's not mine. Oh, sorry. <laughs> yeah, you're in. That's uh, yeah, you're all set. So where do I go? Uh, click on the bottom right. That would be your profile. The the, the head and on the yeah bottom. the person. All right. Edit profile. All right. Yep. So, this is a 10 week course, right? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> 10 hour course. Okay. So images and design. Um, basically the same thing that we we're talking about with everybody, the bio, I see that uh, Renee also said the bio has been something in the Q and a, but um, try to write it out in the notes app first. You definitely want to write it out in the notes app. Then, use line breaks, hit the return button and create different lines, you know, type of bullet point, copy and paste that right into Instagram. You can, you can play around with it, see what looks good, take stuff out, add stuff in, use emojis. Definitely want to work on the bio, but, um, the, uh, you got your, you got your link. This looks like a business profile. I would think, I don't know, but you don't have a location. So if you want to convert to a business profile, add your location and then you can, and then with that, you can have that contact button that people can call, email, message you directly from Instagram. Um, the content uh, looks good. You have uh, personal, you have personal stuff on here, which is good. You have uh, all different types of work. You know, there's different kitchens and bathrooms. That's definitely good. The only thing I would do is definitely try to add um, like memes or, you know, um, holiday posts or community type posts, something to just break up the, uh, the work a little bit. You know, if it's, um, I don't know what's coming up. Oh, Halloween. Do I do like a Halloween type post? Happy Halloween. And, you know, you can design something kind of fun in Canva, or you can just take something off Google, but definitely break up the, uh, the business a little bit. And, um, it's definitely good. And you have highlights too. If you want to add, um, some more categories for your highlights, that would definitely be good as well, but definitely, definitely good. You just want to um, switch up your content a little bit. Okay. Uh, here's a question. Can you speak on the locator question above? Do we use an at sign or a hashtag in the bio? Um, if you want to tag an actual 
uh, page, you use an at sign. If you want to tag, which I'm, you're probably not tagging a page, but you want to use a hashtag. That's definitely better. In your bio. Yeah. Not unless you have multiple bot, you know, you have multiple um, pages and you want to tag other pages, but I would just utilize the, um, uh -oh. the hashtag. Oh, there you go. Uh, should I, should I switch to professional account? Yeah. Okay. I didn't do, I'm skipping over bio for now. Okay. Did I miss any questions? Yeah. Uh, I, Amy, we have Amy okay. here. All right. So I have a business Instagram. Um, I don't know. B Bogia Vanderstreek. Sorry if I mispronounce that. Do I still need a personal account that is also a business account? Um, I don't. I don't think you would need a, I don't know if I understand. You would want a personal account that you would use as a business account. No, I would just use the business account, but um, yeah. So the bio, you definitely just want to work on the bio a little bit. Try it. Like I said, write it out in the notes app and, you know, create line breaks, use emojis, use hashtags, you know, make it appealing. Try to make it not too wordy. You have the, um, the link, which is good. You have an email option. So this is definitely, um, a business profile, which is good. And then, um, I, I, I guess you guys just started this because, um, it's just, uh, your logo with, uh, you know, different, um, like an image around it, like different colors. So I would just work on the bio and then you can start, um, you know, start posting all your content on there. That's cool how she made that. Yeah, definitely. And then if you want to keep that, if you want to keep that, so it stays like that. You would want, you would want to post three pictures in a row or um, do what Jonathan was doing. I think, yeah, I think it was, yeah, Jonathan, he had six pictures and he was using that app that's that cut up the pictures and they perfectly made an image out of six, or you can just post three at a time. You know, if you utilize, if you were, you know, doing let's say you do a project, you know, for a room, you can do um, a before and after a behind the scenes and then a final product. And then you post in the same order every single time you do, you know, a project or a job, you know, you take a before and after photo, you take a behind the scenes photo, and then you take that, you know, that final shot of the room, you know, looking good or what, what, whatever you guys are designing. That's definitely a neat um, way to post different stuff. And you're still keeping that, um, you're keeping it in threes. So you're keeping what you create on the bottom and, everything will look, um, it'll just look really appealing to the eye. Yeah, that's great. Charles? Yeah. <laughs> um, I'm, I'm somewhere in setting up. But I could get back to all of this, right? To edit business and everything? I could get back in there or is it done once and that's it? Yeah, you can go back into that and I go back and edit it. Yeah, yeah, definitely. All right. Okay. I think um right, complete I think we your profile. Have... Okay. All right. So how do I log out of this? Uh -huh. uh, everyone. I think I think we covered did everyone. We, yeah, did we miss anybody? Oh. Thank you, Amy. So am I automatically logged into this or is there a way yes. to get out? Yes. Automatically logged in. Yeah, it is Instagram. Mm -hmm. All right. I'll just leave it live. Well, leave it live, right? Yeah. Uh, well, you can, you can quit the app. Just um, there's no reason to log out. Oh, okay. So enough for today. I get in there and fill in all the blanks. I mean, I've heard everything you were saying about it, the pictures and everything like yeah, that. Yeah, definitely. I, I did this through, uh, originally through uh, another, not, not Safari, so that I would keep it separate. Because mm -hmm. I want to create a commercial Facebook page. I don't want to tie it in with my personal account, which I can't seem to cancel. So. Did we answer Susan's question? Do you need to allow Instagram access to pictures and video? Yeah, if you're gonna if you're gonna be posting, you uh, definitely need to allow that. Okay. Or you can allow, you know, uh, select photos, but I would just always allow. 
Awesome. Well, this was great. Sorry. Yeah, I, I hope this was definitely <laughs> valuable to everybody. Oh my that, God. Uh, I, think this, I think this was amazing. I mean, if you guys can, uh, whoever's still, still remaining, if you could raise your hands, if like this kind of interactive, um, yeah. you know, webinars, <laughs> like, I, 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 think that's there. I feel like they bring so much more value. Um, you know, if this yeah. is something that you'd like to see moving forward, if you could let us know. And I mean, this would be great to, to be able to provide to our mm -hmm. members. So Terry, you see, I wasn't kidding around when I said I two left feet when it comes to technology. <laughs> it's okay. I'm sorry, I don't mean to laugh. No, I hear so. laugh is good. Everyone needs <laughs> it. It is good. <laughs> but believe me, there's much more where this came from. I'm usually the laugh. No. <laughs> so right, well, guys, I... everyone follow now Charles. We're going to yes. follow his progress <laughs> and see you know what? That how he great. does. Okay. We should do that. I, I just I just want to know one thing. <laughs> you know, with the other woman who was giving the seminar and she said to, to if somebody asked her to pick up the kids and she says no, but I'll pick them up Friday, what are they gonna do for two days? <laughs> <laughs> you know. Uh, that's funny. All right. Well, thank you everyone. Thank you, Sal. This was thank awesome. Thank you guys. Really appreciate it. And um Hope to see you guys soon. I'm sure we will. Thank Thanks, you. Have a good one. See you. Thank Bye. you.